Hello, Chevre, how are you? I hope everyone's gesund, stark, and freilich, begash misuberuchnis. Healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. And all those that need to be helped in any way whatsoever should be helped by Hashem straight away. Today we are going to talk about a thought for Rosh Hashanah. First we'll start with a Pesach from the Rebbe's new capital and we'll explain it hopefully more as we go along. Pesach Kuflam et Beis Pnei Eli v'chaneini Turn to me and favor me Kemishpat lo'ea ve'ishmecha As is fitting toward those who love your name. My friends, my Talmidim, I must confess that I stand here before you today with mixed emotions and mixed feelings. Melbourne right now is in a state of extreme lockdown. And as it stands now, to daven with a minion is illegal. This is a great decree. Never in our imagination would we have thought such a day could come in modern times. So my mixed emotions are, on the one hand, I feel that this Rosh Hashanah is going to be the most amazing Rosh Hashanah and the coming year is going to be the most amazing year. Why? Because we've been put through such a trying times. So therefore, from here on in, it must be good. And if we're in such a situation that the Ebrishta has made, that means that even if the davening won't have the regular trappings of inspiration and spiritual stimulation, but nevertheless, it'll be just good. And if we think about it even more in a certain sense, many of the aspects of what we're meant to accomplish in Rosh Hashanah has been accomplished. For example, Rosh Hashanah, we have to recognize Hashem as king. Part of recognizing Him as king means He's the boss, He's in control. This year, everyone will agree that we've been humbled. If anybody thought they controlled the situation, Hashem showed us He's in control. So, shiftless ha'adam v'gadlus akel. We've all seen how man has his limitations and how Hashem is running the show. Also, this year, we haven't been with the hustle and bustle of the world and the grinding business world. It's been more of a state of disengagement and you could say withdrawal because of isolation. So therefore, we've become more spiritual, less on our devices, so that's also the purpose of Rosh Hashanah, to look inside yourself and to make spirituality more of a priority. Another thing, as we say in the Kapitel Chav Zayin, which we're saying every single day now, the Posik, Acha Sho'alti Meis Hashem, we're all begging to Shifti Beis Hashem, Kol Has there ever been a year where we've asked so much from the depth of our heart so all this was happening already till now. So that means we've accomplished so much till now, for sure it's going to be well and easy. But on the other hand, being that a person should always look to grow spiritually, sometimes I feel this seems like it's a challenge, it's a test. And that's the question. Am I going to man up? Am I going to rise to the occasion? Am I going to dig deeper and reveal deeper powers in me to overcome the challenge? Maybe you could say that there's a difference if we look at the world, if I look at you, I say you're going to have an amazing year because you've lived through such hard times and you've used it in the best way possible. But the person in relation to himself, I have to look into myself and say that this Rosh Hashanah, I might have to work even harder to reveal the spirituality that I have. So there is a letter from the Rebbe, one year, which he spoke about this Pasuk, this Kapitel Chav Zayin, and the Pasuk that says, L'chom alibi bakshu fonai. And the Rebbe explained the meaning of the verse, bakshu fonai, seek inwardness. And he said that this is very important when we're talking about the month of reckoning and accounting, 
that don't judge yourself by your external faculties. You should realize you are rich, you are wealthy, you have a fortune inside of you, in your primius. Always seek Bakshufane the primius. And he said that makes the world of a difference in your reckoning. If you're judging yourself only by your external faculties, your normal abilities, then you're underestimating yourself. Never underestimate yourself. You're greater than you think. So in that light, when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, and we think about what is Rosh Hashanah, Hasidus explains the essential theme of Rosh Hashanah is the idea of Tamli Chuni Aleichem. We crown Hashem. It's a day of Hashem's coronation. So what does that mean that we crown Hashem and that He is King? Practically speaking in Avodah, that means that we have to look inside our level of devotion and dedication towards the king, his boss, and see, are we really loyal? 100%. You can't show up to the king and say, I'm yours, 50%. Oh, if you tell that to the king straight up, I'm yours, 50%, you'll have one verdict. So therefore, what it means, it means that we have to always try and think of ways we could express our loyalty and devotion deeper, higher, greater. So there's a famous anecdote, a joke, which brings this out. And that is that there was a Jewish farmer who was once called in by the KGB and Kevedet in the Russian communist regime. And they call him in and they say, Alex, you're loyal to the communist party? He goes, da, of course. So they ask him, if you had 20 cows, would you give it to the party? Yeah. If you had 15 sheep, would you give it to the party? Of course. If you had 10 dogs, would you give it to the party? Sure. If you had five chickens, would you give it to the party? He goes, mm. They say, we don't understand. You said 20 cows you'd give to party, 15 sheep you'd give to party, 10 dogs you give to party, and five chickens you have to think about. He says, yeah, but five chickens I take a half. In other words, it's very nice to speak. I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to have sacrifice of this. I'm ready to give away this. But you know what? The sacrifice has to be where it counts. In other words, we're talking about the five chickens you have. And that be ready to give away to show loyalty. So that's a humorous anecdote. But I recently heard a story from Rabbi Sholem Berlipska, who's a shlich of the Rebbe in Miami, and he said the following story, that he once went into Yechidis, into the Rebbe, and he had been already in Yechidis at the beginning of that year, Purim time, but he was granted another Yechidis in honor of his birthday. So he went into Yechidis with his wife, and what happens at the end of, you know, it was like, it was like the end of his first year on Shlichus, and this is like a story in the mid-70s. And he wanted to give the Rebbe Nachas. So he wrote the whole tzettel that during his first year in Shlichas, I put on film with so many and so many people. I started so many new classes. And he thought, he felt good about himself. He's going to the Rebbe. He's going to give the Rebbe this report. And the Rebbe's really going to enjoy it. Meanwhile, he'd been in Yechidis before that year, Purim time. And he'd written to the Rebbe about how he met a, a, a girl on a Shabbos and she was lost and her mother had run away from her father with someone else to India and got lost in some Eastern uh, cult and he was Makar of this girl. So when he wrote, when he went, wrote to the Rebbe about that in, in, in Purim time, the Rebbe had told him Make sure the mother gets a get from her husband, the father, the girl that he found. Anyways, let's move forward. He went into Yechidis. He's into Yechidis now. Yud based Tamas. He's standing in front of the Rebbe. He gave the Rebbe his paper. The Rebbe's scrolling through the paper. It was the Rebbe's custom. And the Rebbe gets to the bottom of the page, like after a minute and a half, because the Rebbe used to read it very quickly. And the Rebbe didn't comment on anything that was written in the paper. And he looked at Rebbe Lipsker, and he tells Rabbi Lipsker, "Und was ist wegen der jungen Frau, was das geschrieben wegen ihr? What's happening with that young woman that you had written to me about?" And Rabbi Lipsker was stunned. He he didn't remember. 
about what women he didn't write it to the Rebbe this time and the Rebbe is looking at him straight and to tell you in Rabbi Lipska's words he says it was like staring directly at the sun during the day without sunglasses that's how he felt and he started shaking and he said he felt like a woodpecker and the Rebbe's floor is made out of wood so his mind is blank and he didn't get, he didn't, he says he didn't remember anything that the Rebbe said after that. And he just left the room. His wife told him later that the Rebbe gave him many, many brachas. Anyways, after that, he didn't leave any stone unturned and worked on it for a long, long time. I forgot to say, I'm sorry, that originally when the Rebbe told him to, 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 to make sure that the mother got a get, he tried to find her, and he worked in it for a couple of days, but he couldn't find her. Don't forget, it was in the days before smartphones, before internet, before Google, nothing. So he worked in it for a couple of days, but what could he do? She wasn't nowhere to be found, so he dropped it. Then the Rebbe, a couple of months later, when he went to Yechidis, asked him, what's the vegan defray that you wrote to me? So he was shocked, stunned, that the Rebbe had mentioned this. So then he says, as soon as he left the Rebbe's room, he got onto it. When he came back to Miami, he didn't stop working on it until he found her, and in the end he arranged to get. So he said, listen, look at this lesson. One lesson of the story is the Rebbe is obviously slow. The Rebbe is worried about one lost sheep, one neshama. That's one idea, one lesson. But I'm taking another lesson, that sometimes we look at ourselves we want to make a tally, a reckoning, and we're saying, I'm good. Look, I did this, I did this, and you are good, and you did a lot of things. But sometimes when it's something that involves another person, we have to be very, very careful not to forget. And this is what he said that he took the lesson. He thought he's a smart actor, he's full of himself, and he's full of the great deeds. And the Rebbe is looking at him straight at his face. He looks at him straight and he says, you forgot this Jewish soul? You forgot this Neshamala? How could you forget? So it's the same thing over here. When it comes to Rosh Hashanah, and we're talking about Tamli Chuni Aleichem, we have to remember that, especially when it comes to things that are interpersonal, that involve others, deal with that thing which is the, your five chickens. The thing which it could be, really, you'll feel the sacrifice. But especially if it involves other per people, things that you could... Bring out another people. Maybe you hurt another person. So when it comes to those five chickens, that's what Rosh Hashanah is about. Or in this case, something that Rabbi Lipska had dropped, some mission that the Rebbe had given him, which he found too difficult. And the Rebbe meant that you shouldn't stop. Go after this one small Neshama. And this is what we have to be thinking about on Rosh Hashanah. When it comes to Tam Lichuni Aleichem, Address the thing which might be painful, which might be difficult, but it's going to make you all the more of a better person and a better yid. And you reach a deeper, more intimate level of connection to Hashem by dealing with that issue and rising and becoming stronger because of it. And this applies especially in this year Rosh Hashanah. And maybe we could say that Tovshin Pei Aleph is Tehei Shnas Ponecho avakesh. We're going for primius and we're going for Hashem's deepest levels and connection, higher. And this is also the meaning of the Pasik. Pinei elai v'chaneni. Teheishnas, pinei elai. We want that the Abishta should look at, his, look at us with his essence. But as the Pasik itself says, turn to me and be gracious as is fitting towards those who love your name. When we reach out to the Ebishter with our essence, he returns to us in his essence, and the Ebishter should tell everyone should have a ksivich sima teva, l'shona teva, m'suka, v'teva, nireva, nigla, and that it should bring to the gula, mitzvah, shleima, take it from a yad, mamish.